Hello and welcome back to Reality Check and to the second episode of our three-part Reality Check special all about the science of upcoming sci-fi thriller Prey. Last week we upgraded our puny human brains with mods. Newer mods to be precise. Make sure you get that episode direct into your eyeballs if you haven't already. This week we're going to delve into the science of one of the coolest and most useful pieces of future tech found aboard the space station Talos 1, the Fabricator. It's basically the ultimate in video game crafting. Require a glue canister for your glue cannon? Not a problem. Need a new mug because your old one transformed into an alien? Sure thing, buddy. Need a new face because the mug alien ate your face? Oh my god! So how does it work? Well, before you can make stuff, you need to have all the various building blocks required. These can be obtained by cramming all of the junk you find around Talos 1 into another machine called the Recycler. In essence, this combo of Recycler and Fabricator allows you to craft almost anything from the trash you find around the station. Not only is this really cool and useful, it's also highly ethical. So, how close are we to getting one of these Fabricators in real life? Well, to help me out, I asked nanomaterials chemist, Dr. Suze Kundu. The fabricator we see in Prey is pretty advanced. We're not quite there yet, but 3D printing has taken us pretty far already. Not only are we able to print in a range of different materials, 3D printers are a lot cheaper these days, and we can create far more intricate things than we could before. Recently, a 3D printer was released where you can print in two different materials, one of which can be a dissolvable substance. Now, it prints as a solid material, but as soon as you've created something you wouldn't otherwise be able to create without the support, you can pop it into a tank of water and one of those materials will dissolve away, leaving something you just wouldn't otherwise be able to have created before. In fact, the very latest 3D printers now allow for up to 13 materials to be printed simultaneously. Other cutting-edge uses of 3D printing include super tough ceramics, prosthetic limbs, video game weapon replicas, bridges, entire houses, and even people. Kind of. You can even create tissue these days. So by 3D printing a bio scaffold, you're able to inject that with somebody's stem cells and encourage those stem cells to grow into different bits of tissue that can be transplanted into the body. So 3D printing is not just spare parts for your washing machine, it could be spare parts for humans as well. As exciting as modern 3D printing is though, it's not quite up there with the fabricator. First off, 3D printing is much, much slower, and it pales in comparison in what you can create in terms of materials and complexity. However, as is often the case in science these days, the answer might be to approach from a different scale. That's right, we need to go nano. Nanofabrication is building from the atomic level all the way up to create actual materials. So by arranging different atoms we can create molecules, and by arranging those molecules together we can create a range of different materials. So I imagine that this nanofabricator would have a vat containing all of the elements. They could be siloed up so that you have each of these elements available to you as you wish, perhaps in these different little siphons. And this nanofabricator could potentially take any atom that it needed and put it in exactly the right place to create any material that you want. This notion of a nanofabricator is not a new idea though. Back in 2013, when talking to the BBC, science historian and all-round cool guy James Burke predicted a future when all people would have their own personal nanofactories. Using these machines, Burke predicts that individuals would be able to print pretty much anything they could ever want from just the stuff around them dirt and water. After all, these two things contain a lot of the basic elements that you would need. Although, perhaps not everything. There'd be certain elements that you wouldn't be able to get hold of in just the stuff around you, so some of those rarer elements. You could probably crush up a mobile phone actually and, and release a fair few of the ones that you were missing. So, what is holding us back from actually creating nanofabricators today? Nanotechnology's biggest challenge at the moment is that when you scale things up, you lose efficiency and you lose some of the potential for that nanotechnology to work. 
When you think about building something, if we were to build on an atomic scale, we are just simply way too big to do it. We are actual giants in the nano world. And this is why we need to create things that are much smaller to be able to do that for us. So if we want to create something that can build on an atomic scale, we need to push that science and engineering even further so that we can create even tinier machines that are actually able to do that, that can work on that atomic scale. So, if I understand this right, we need to figure out how to build tiny robots so they can build tinier robots so we can build anything we like. Like a giant robot. Well, if we can solve this particular problem of scale, perhaps there will be a fabricator of sorts in our future. Let me know the first thing you would fabricate if you had one in the comments down below. Now come back next week for the final of our three-part Reality Check special. Episode three is all about the psychology of being prey. Don't miss it. <laughs>